Hello everyone. I'd like to talk about another really common standing wave system. So this is an open closed system or a fixed free system. So one end is the waves are fixed and the other end the medium is free to move back and forth. Though these kind of waves appear in many places, the most common one is probably in musical instruments, uh, in horns, where you have one end where your mouth is, uh, the air is not free to move back and forth. And at the end of the horn, the air is free to go in and out of the tube back and forth, right? And so just like with a fixed fixed system with strings, in these systems, there are only certain standing waves that are allowed to exist, only certain wavelengths of standing waves that are allowed to exist. And so let's think, what's, what does the simplest one look like? So here I have my tube and it's uh, closed at one end and it's open at the other end and it's of length L. What does the standing wave inside it look like? Well, at this end, the wave has to be, has to be fixed, right? So it has, to, it has to be stuck at a point. But here, the air is free to go back and forth and oscillate back and forth out of the end of the tube. So it means that the amplitude of the wave can be, can be quite big. It'll be an antinode. And so the smallest or the most fundamental thing we can fit in there is just a wave that looks like this, right? And remember, when we draw a wave that looks like this, where the amplitude is big, for sound waves, it's actually air moving back and forth horizontally. But let's, let's try to find a relationship between the length of the tube and the wavelength. Well, this is actually only a quarter of the whole wave, right? It goes down and then up and there's some, right? That's the whole wavelength of our standing wave. And this is only a quarter of it. I'm just going to move this whole thing over a bit. Well, the length of this is equal to lambda over 4, which means that lambda is equal to 4L over 1. Okay, now let's do this again for our next harmonic, just, just like we did with the fix fix system. So we know it has to be fixed on this side and it has to be free on this side. A lot of people want to draw this one, but this one can't exist, right? Because this is fixed at this end, but the fact that the boundary condition is free to go here means that, that the air is free to move, means that the system forces the next solution to be one that is free to move. You, you can't have a fixed end where the air is free to move, right? Because there's nothing to, to fix it, <laughs> to make it stop moving. So the next actual one looks like this, right? And this is L is equal to three lambda over four, or lambda is equal to four L over three. Let's just do one more to see the pattern. Well, what does the next one look like? Well, the next one looks like this. Okay. And the wavelength, well, how many is this? This is one whole wavelength plus a quarter, right? So that is five quarters of a wavelength. Or lambda is equal to 4L over 5. And I think we see the pattern starting to emerge here, right? Lambda N is equal to 4 times the length divided by N, which is some integer. We notice a little difference. It's 1, 3, and 5. So it's just the odd integers that are allowed in this equation. None of the even ones. And that's a really, really, really important distinction. So this is a important enough equation to put a box around. And just like with the fixed fixed system, we can recognize that the velocity is equal to the frequency times lambda, and that the velocity, uh, in this case for you know a tube, the velocity, the speed of sound isn't gonna change. So we can write the frequencies in terms of the velocity of the wave speed and the length of the tube. And we can recognize that, that, that this is the fundamental. This is n times the fundamental, but with a big distinction here that n is equal to just odd integers. So this is another important equation to be able to get. 
So these are the two equations. Uh, I think it's important that you're able to derive these yourself though, right? You don't want to rely on these equations because the kinds of problems we're going to give you are going to make you think about how to apply these equations and, and what the system actually is. So, you know, the common kind of equation is you have an open, open tube and you're blowing in it and that has some set of harmonics and you close one end and blow into it again, you know, how does the frequency change of the sound? So that's the kind of stuff you're going to have to think about.